Welcome back, collective. I have another message for you. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the author and finisher of our faith, and we declare your goodness, your love, and your works all the day long. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same sun, we exalt you, we praise you, and we worship you, Lord. Jesus, I thank you for who you are in our lives. I thank you for leading and guiding us. I pray that you would shed a light and speak to us very clearly concerning the situation, concerning the people that have betrayed us and that have played wicked mind games to keep us bound due to their own confusion or their desire to control, their selfishness. Father, we destroy every soul tie and we break every demonic connection in every cord we literally destroy and obliterate every cord and every tie to our past that we have walked away from that we have been clearly removed from Jesus, we thank you for exposing every hidden enemy and even more so their intentions and their deeper intentions. Please allow us to hear and to see our enemies' intentions on our lives and how it is that they're moving against us. Please reveal these things to us so that we can stop and block these things. I bind and rebuke all demonic energy all word curses, any witchcraft spells, magic, sex magic, anything that demonic energies would do to affect the progress of the believer or anyone in this collective, those that are rightfully in this collective. I do not speak for those that are stalking, for those that are gang stalking, for those that are hating, for those that are doing malicious and evil things behind the scenes, I pray that their intentions would be known, their viciousness would be exposed, and their devious works would be returned a hundredfold back into their own life. Those that are gang stalking other people on their on their job or at their place of work, I reverse every single curse and I return that energy back that these people would be gang stalked and harassed at their place of work. They will have no peace when they're working. They will have no peace when they're trying to earn. I thank you, Jesus, and I thank you, Lord God. I pray that you will continually to reveal the treachery of the enemy. We stop and block every single assignment that the enemy has created and used to prevent our ascension, our moving forward, our launching towards and ahead. We reverse every single curse. And I thank you, Father, for speaking mightily and moving through your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move and use me as a vessel to speak the truth of the Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat> Hi, collective. <sighs> so, <laughs> it's just exhausting, <laughs> like, the, the level of obsession and the, the, the devious and evil intentions behind people's madness. It's like, they don't stop until they're called out, until God really um, causes some type of like catastrophe in their life. Because it's like these people feel that they don't have, I don't know. It's like collective, you have somebody that's really trying to adapt to this new truth, this new way of life that you're living. This is not a good person for you. And I'm going to tell you why. This person is someone, hang on. Yeah, I felt like I just had something in my mouth or my braces or whatever. This person doesn't want this to get out. But it's like you have people, this could be more than one person. You have people in your life that have worked very hard and spent a lot of time getting you to the point where they can manage you and handle you and treat you any way that they want to. I got it. Okay. It was some tiny, tiny... It could have been like a piece, I don't know, but that's the thing. God is going to allow you to see and feel and actually taste what is off and the little things that people have been doing, the microaggressions or, or the subtle influences that they're doing to try and keep you stuck or to try and cause problems for you. And these are not even people, like a lot of them are not who you would think. 
Some of these are, you know, relatives that you used to deal with. Some of these are like, this could be an ex-best friend. This could be an ex-partner, whatever it is, a parent, whoever. Let me get into it. So I have the two of pentacles. This person is really trying to adapt to this new truth that you have. Like I said, they're going back and forth in their thoughts and their emotions and how they um, handle certain things and how they were able to balance you for quite some time. This person feels like they they had profit when they were with you and now they're experiencing loss without you. And this is literally how this person felt. And that was why they didn't care about how they could keep you. You know, they wanted to keep you in one hand or in their back pocket or something so that you can always make this first person look good or give them some type of ego boost. This is definitely a one-sided relationship. And when I say one-sided, this is a person that knew to hold on to you because it was only beneficial to them. You're going to know who this person is because the more I go into the story, the more you're going to see they've never given you anything to increase who you are, to add to your stature. They didn't do anything to lift your head. It's like this person would get happy to feel like they had one up on you all the time. This was never a true or genuine person. You made this person look good. You made this person feel good. You increased their confidence. There was something, you know, like you are a blessed person. And when you step into this person's life, they, they knew how to drain this, how to, how to juggle this, and then go to someone else and be, um, be brave. They would go to someone else and be charismatic. They would go somewhere else and tell all your stories or the way that you, you know, your personality, they would take it. And this is how they wanted to make you think that the relationship was supposed to go. This is like a selfish friend that like, like this is a fake best friend that'll say, well, I'm your best friend, but I'm this person's best friend too. They just started hanging out with this person, or this is a dude that's attracted to them or something, but this is a thirsty, desperate person. They just want to be seen as someone special in someone's eyes. So they would let you juggle you to take from you so that they can go be impressive with someone else. Because the truth is you were the light, you were the shine, you were the pizzazz, you were all of that. In the relationship, but in order for them to feel like they were the one with the higher dynamic, they have to bring somebody else into it so that they can have you begging and groveling for their attention. This is them holding that scale. So this is how they get other people to really, you know, fall for them. Like, oh, you see, I'm breadcrumbing this person that I've known for this amount of time for you. Like, you're more special. I look at you like this. But this is just like, if this is a female, this is a thirsty broad that just wants some dude or whoever sitting around in their face telling them about themselves or trying to boost their confidence or whatever they whoever they can use just like how they were using you and it's like because if someone is using you for their own benefit you're like some type of piece of property or some type of caged animal or some type of trinket to this person you're you're not even necessarily human so if you make one mistake or if you fall in you know like if you step over one crack oh this person will break your back and I really mean that. And this is how they were doing this to keep control over you. They always wanted to have something to be irritated at you about, but not talking to you about it. It's like this person always created something to have a grudge or to hold some type of like whatever against you to keep you feeling left out. Number one, this was to intentionally make you feel like you were being left out. This was to make you feel like you were being used or you had been abandoned or you were some type of like bad person or you're a dangerous person or, you know, like they wanted you to feel lonely. They wanted you to feel alone because literally they wanted to be you. Whoever this was, this could have been a relationship or whatever. They needed to keep you around because you are the one carrying all of the glory. You're the one with all of the gifts. You're the one with all the talents. This is a selfish person that you have been able to deal with them. You've been allowing this person to treat you like this and to juggle you and really come to a place of ad adaptation with this. Like this person had adapted. They thought that you were fully acclimated and adapted to this toxic BS that they gave you and how they hold, they held on to you. They breadcrumbed you. They wanted you to see them giving to other people to make you feel like they were busy. They were focused on other stuff. You were not that important. They had more options. 
And this is what they're doing with their time. They just wanted you to feel pitiful. Like they wanted you to beg for something. And this person was stingy and selfish with you. You were not like that with this person. They were like that with you. They did, they did all of this just to make you feel bad. The, the worst part about it for me is the fact, the mind games. The fact that a lot of what this person put you through was to change your mindset. It was to create a certain type of mindset within you that really didn't have anything to do with who you really were. They wanted you to feel like you were beneath value, you were beneath worth, you were beneath everything. But the truth is, you have a lot of value. You added value to this person here while they were looking like a clown. You added value to them there. You added value to this person here. Because this is what they're doing. The energy that they get from you, they give to this person. The energy they get from this person, they give to you. This is why there has to be three. There has to be another person involved. They have to put on this illusion that they're better or, or that they're the ones dishing or handing out whatever. And the truth is they're draining people. They need a friend. This is not a real, they don't have friends. This is a female that's, that's doing whatever, with every person, you know, like this is somebody that wants people to really be up underneath, you know, like it's just sickening. And they thought that they could pull this junk and then leave you out in the cold. Like this is somebody that really thought that they were going to hold back from you and be stingy and selfish to show you that you were not valued. You were undervalued. But you were really the one with all the value, with all the inspiration, with all the intuition, with all the blessings. It's just they managed to do some type of emotional manipulation to make you think that this is how things were supposed to go. So you're steady giving to them. They're steady getting from someone else. This person does not give. They don't give anything. They don't give anything. I'm telling you, they don't give anything. They take, this is a taker and this is a manipulator and someone that wants to control because it's all about them. If you walked away from this person, this person is still following you. This person is still stalking you. They're still copying everything you do. They're still wanting you to be at some form of influence in their life. They're still projecting energy and doing all types of wickedness and craziness. Because the the dynamic still has not changed for them. The fact that you're gone still doesn't change this person's mindset to think that they can't take from you and you're not presently in a give and take energy with this person. They don't ever want to give anything. They never gave you anything. So they don't even think twice about the fact that they're still being a selfish leech, a parasite. And this is the mindset that they've created, that they're so much greater, that they're better, that they deserve to be able to do this or something. Like you owe them something or whatever. No, this looks like you got put in a really terrible situation, even dealing with this person and allowing this person to have any form of leverage or power or authority. Like if this person had an opportunity to be charitable to you in any way, shape or form, oh man, they draw those scales out. They tell everybody about it. This is them telling everybody, here's some information for you. Like this person... And they're still trying to figure this out because this would be the type of person to want to have everybody around at the same time. So it's like, well, I'm going to give to you and I want to give to them too. This is a narcissist sociopath. It doesn't matter if these are men, if these are women, if this is a straight woman, she'll still do this and have women, you know, like, well, I want them fighting over me. Well, they want to spend like this person is freaking sick. I'm like, I don't like this person. <laughs> If this is dudes, this person would do this with friends, like on some weird stuff, like want to invite you to hang out with them, but then they got a whole nother friend there. It's just like, bro, do your thing. You know what I mean? Like, what is this? A play date? But they got to let you see somebody else likes them or, you know, somebody else. Like, this is weird, childish junk right here. This child, this, this person with the mind of a child, they thought that they were larger than life doing this to you. They knew that you were experiencing some type of like lack. 
financially. You could have had an issue with your home. You could have literally experienced homelessness where you were out in the elements. You could have had a sick or ill child or someone with you. There could have been two of you. It doesn't have to be. But they felt good. They were holding on so tight. They felt good to not give to you and to hold back from you. Um, this was either fused by some type of like grudge. This could have been a small one. Because like I said, this person likes to have a reason to not have to give because this person is very envious and jealous of other people. That's why they like to control what other people have. This is the type of person that will try to sell you your own underwear. Like what? This person, they don't want to give. They've never given anything. They don't give anything. They're a taker, which means that now if you are not in an equal give and take with this person and you feel this person still lingering in your energy, they are well, they are the devil. They want to steal, kill, and destroy. This is a robber. This is a thief and a robber. This is someone that only feels like they should be the ones receiving anything from anybody. And if anybody needs something, they'll give them their own money back to them. This is just not okay. And now this person is feeling like you stepped into a, um, a hiding space of discernment. <laughs> this person feels like because of this juggling and how they did this or how they breadcrumbed you and they wanted to just, you know, make you feel less than anything. They wanted to show you that just how not important you were. And this is like grown folks doing this. This person feels like because they did this to you, because they thought that they were going to breadcrumb you by just really pulling the okie doke. This person has no game. They have no intuition. They, they want to put themselves in a place so that they can be large and in charge. They want to be the charitable one. But it's like, if you let this person gaslight you and make you think that they're bringing anything to you, they're not. They're bringing burdens, they're bringing worry, they're bringing all their problems, and they're going to lay that at your feet for you to clean it up. But they have a zero anything for you. If this person puts you through a bad situation, what this is telling me here, it went straight from them holding back and making you feel like you did, you weren't nothing, you were less than done on the bottom of their shoe. You moved out of this energy so quick, fast, and in a hurry and stepped into your power. It's just like, you know, you realize when the discernment really kicked in, you realize, hold on one dang on freaking minute. I'm the one making moves out here. I'm the one with all the insight and all the motivation. I'm the one with the freaking bag. I'm the one with the money. I am the money. You know what I'm saying? Somebody could take you for what you got. It don't matter. You're going to build that back up. Somebody could think they put you in a difficult situation where you're homeless. Please. That's just like Donald Trump. He filed bankruptcy. Okay, so that has nothing to do with who he is in his core. And it's like being in this situation, the moment you got away from this selfish individual, this toxic person, you just started to just move ahead very, very quickly. This is like you were able to take action like nobody's business. You were able to really, really move forward. You were able to like make haste and using every single resource that you have. And now that you walked away from this difficult situation, this person, you received the discernment, you saw exactly what they were doing. You just started speeding up in your progress. Like this was like quick action and suddenly thinking on your feet. you manifested a new opportunity for yourself it's like whatever you manifested is just so big this person has a lot of different visions or images of you so it's like, this is someone that's really in their head, like they're going back and forth. And this person is like, okay, well, I was doing really good juggling this. 
you know, they, they felt like they did a good job, you know, making you become adaptable to this energy right here so that they can give to more than one person and they can be a double minded man or a woman. And then two, you know, two heads about this, they can give from you and get from you. And all they do is just recycle the energy and turn it right back around to the other person. They like this person is just not loyal. They are just very selfish and arrogant and ego driven. They want to be seen as like, and they're not, they want to be seen as the man or the woman or whoever that it girl or that it, and they are absolutely not. This person is pinching pennies right now. They really are. They're pinching pennies and they're trying to hold on to not only the stability and the little bit of money that they got, but they're really trying to hold on to their mind right now. Because this person knows they took a huge risk with this, leaving you out in the cold and making you think that you were some isolated mo Martian or monster on some other planet or whatever. I mean, they, they were not expecting you to move so quickly out of this. And this is why I say watch out for this person, because they didn't come and give you an apology to move you out of this. All they know is where they left you. And when they saw you walking away, the in-between is what this person can't fully figure out is how you were able to manifest so quickly. How were you able to really, you know, gather your resources and use everything so effectively in your life to really produce this outcome where you are at peace and you are no longer interested in any of this. This is not worth you fighting for. This is not worth you even looking back at. This is like you moved ahead and you still held on to the truth of what happened in this situation. This, this talk Toxic energy, this, these um, turbulent, um, troubled times and stuff like that, that's behind you. Just like this person, get thee behind me, Satan. And that's what you have to tell this person. Energetically, if you know who this is, this could be more than one person. Like I said, regardless, they are selfish. They see no problem in still taking from you because they never gave you anything in the relationship. Do you get what I'm saying? So this is why in their mind, they felt like they could get away with this, with their crazy self. Now this person is, is like really looking back on everything and they're like, oh, is this my fault? Oh, did I do that? Like this person is trying to go into some type of soul searching or reflection. I mean, like um, self-reflection or really trying to search for answers or get insight. but they're not saying anything. They're following you around with this light. It's like this sicko, they knew that you were hurt. You could have a child. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be. There could be three of you. It doesn't have to be, just take it out of fits. It's like, they wanna sit back and just watch you be sad or they just sit back and watch you leave. Like this person, and now they just sit back and look at this and think about this. This person feels like you manifested all of these blessings and you've manifested a miracle in your life and all types of things, even before you really took flight and walked away from this. You hadn't even fully let this go. When you manifested this, you did this on your own out of a dark and dreary place. You were able to take flight. You were able to really move ahead, thinking on your feet, using your, your intellect and your intuition, your spiritual knowledge. And, and again, they still stand there with their feet stuck in the ice. Still just watching. Because they're a taker. And the reason why they know that you manifested all of this out of this dark and dreary place that they left you in is because, first of all, they didn't give you a freaking cent, a dime. They didn't say a word to you. This person was so evil and so selfish to you. Whatever they showed you in your face, I'm telling you, it's way worse than that. Because what they wanted for you is something very, very dangerous. What they wanted for you, you may not have even been able to recover from this had you not been the spiritualist. Had you not been someone that is led and directed by the divine so that you can create outcomes for yourself.
They saw you walk out of this dark place and start picking up speed and momentum very quickly and create and generate something amazing for yourself. They sat back and watched all of that. Stalking, I'm sure, right? Because 444, you're divinely protected. Then they watched you gather your things and leave. So it's like you hadn't even fully left. Do you get what I mean? Then you left. So while you were creating, after they, they did something to either ensure you in a dangerous situation or put you in a dangerous situation, one or the other, this person had the power, the ability to help you. They did not. They chose not to. They wanted you in this space. They wanted you to feel like this. 25, 25. They wanted you to feel like this. Like, and I return all of this demonic energy back to this person. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you would deal with the hearts of this person. Man, woman, whoever it is. Whomever they are in the life of the collective or even the life of myself. We pray that you would deal with them in the same way. Give back to them what they cooked up for us. And we just rebuke them and bind them from out of our energy in general. It's over. You're like, you've moved on. So they sat back and watched all of this. They sat and watched it. Because you know what, when you moved forward quickly and you stepped out and started doing this, they wanted to see if you would fall back and fail and go back to this. So it was like, they still couldn't show you their hand, you know, there's nothing this person has ever wanted to give you to add to your life, to add to your happiness, your joy, your peace, your love, your self-esteem, your vision, none of that. They've never wanted to give anything to you. They only ever wanted to drain you and take from you. I cannot stress that enough. And now it's like them standing in this hermit energy. They're trying to figure out not how to reconcile or how to fix things with you. In this part, they're not. But they're trying to figure out how did they lose balance? How did they lose control? How did they lose control? They had it. it they had you under lock and key. You were under control. They were able to juggle you. They were able to breadcrumb you. They were able to take what was fabulous about you and then go, you know, present it to someone else. And then they got to feel good about themselves. And then they come back with that false sense of pride, wanting to turn their nose up in your face when it's like they're trying to transmute your energy to be great. Like, what the freak? And we call all of our energy back now in the name of Jesus from these people. We return their energy, their appropriate energy back to them in the name of Jesus. They will not be able to pr proceed from with taking or gathering or using anyone else for their own benefit. And they're not giving in and exchanging rightfully, truthfully, honestly, with integrity and, and, and morality, like, I pray that these people are exposed and dealt with in the name of Jesus, man. The reason why they're trying to reflect is because they were still in this conflict with you. I don't know if you were aware of this, but it's like what really made this person get aggressive was when you tried to mess up this, them juggling you like this. This is someone that wanted to keep juggling you. So they kept causing fights. They would, they would keep arguments going. And just like I said, they have to keep something going. They would stand in opposition. If you said something, they want to be the, the think the opposite. This person was always very defensive with you. They always had this sense of self-importance because they wanted to get, they wanted to, um, I'm hearing gang stalk. They probably gang stalk you with other people. So like, this is, like I said, this is that loser that's going to go and tell somebody how important they are. And then they'll team up with that person so that they can stalk you together. Like, well, you know, this is someone that is crazy, man. This person is crazy. They're like obsessed with you. They're really, really obsessed. And then their obsession is so sick. They feel like they want to be in charge of you. And that is not the case. That's not going to happen. This person was still currently wanting to be territorial or have some type of self-importance towards you. 
So this is this is how they were able to keep this juggling going. You know, like this person would would use this juggling energy to cause conflict. They would use it to cause jealousy or envy or rivalry or anything that they could do. And it was like this manipulator always wanted to have someone else to bring into it. So they're always outnumbering you. This is like, you know what I'm talking about. So they can always outnumber you. They can always have a witness there for them or somebody show, with them showing how much they're willing to sacrifice you with who you are in their life or whatever for them to, to level up in somebody else's life. You get what I mean? Like this person is pitiful. This is not love. This is not love at all. This is all lies, deceit, betrayal, and it's about money and substance. It's like you carry substance. You have so much intellect. You have so much groundedness and stability. This probably a, a, a airhead. Like literally, this person probably lived in their head all day long, thinking and imagining themselves being so grand and everyone coming after them and them saving the day and everyone cheering and all this weird stuff. And it's you. You are important, collective. I'm telling you, you're important. You are intelligent. You are like, you're fearless. And you're very exclusive. So it's like, you know, when you got a wannabe clout chasing weirdo, when they know how exclusive you are, they're counting on the fact that you're not going to be fooling with anybody else. They can go and speak one side or say what they want. They can pull other people like you're not even going to be involved. like you're not going to waste your time faking so hard just to cause some type of, you know, chaos in someone else's life or to control a relationship or to seem more desirable or whatever. Nobody has time for no adult that I, that I would like to know. This is crazy. And it's like, they're still in this energy. This is the energy they are still in. This is currently, they've been in opposition and competition with you. Currently, this person is petty. Currently, they want to clash egos. Like this is somebody that'll sit up and, and repeat or do everything you do, but then they can do it better. Like what? Or they feel like they look better wearing this or doing it. Like what? Oh, well, I should be the one having that or, you know, because everybody likes that. So I should be the one like, shut your dumb mouth. And go get your own life and your own personality and stop doing all this weird junk with people. And it's like, if they don't want to stop, that's fine. But they're going to go live their life and they're not going to bring this junk over to you. No, they're not. This is why they're exposed. This person feels so exposed. This is sad. It is so sad because it's like, they know that they did this. They created all of this conflict on purpose. They wanted you to feel desperate. It's like, this person has such a low self-esteem that they are only okay when people are like this around them. Get away from this person. They'll put you in this just to feel good about their self. This person is dangerous. I don't care who this is to you. Hear what I'm saying in this moment. I don't care how they want to act so supportive and, oh, they love you so much. You know, they're just, you're meant to be together. No, you're not. If God already led you to walk away from this evil individual, this person needs to go within and they need to grow up and they need to clean up their own life. If somebody loved you, they would show you. They would take action. They wouldn't be trying to make you look pitiful and groveling at their feet while they're holding these scales over your head and letting you know who your competitor is or who you have to fight for, you know, like attention or, you know, there's two people here that are for me and there's a, like, who the hell does this person think they are? They think they're some type of celebrity or something. They think people supposed to just be at their feet like that. Don't ever fall for that jump. If you are a grown woman or a grown man, do not go out with your grown friend and their other so-called best friend. Because I'm going to tell you what, they're going to have a hundred of these. Okay. Little kids have best friends. Grown folks know people that are solid. You don't have to put all of that extra on there. That's some childish manipulative junk. And I don't like those titles. That's like somebody telling you you're their only soulmate or you're my soulmate. Shut up. There's many. 
You're not stuck, collective. This person, they want to be seen as so important and so this and so that. And, and they're not. They're not. Do you see the similarities here? Look at how they'll break you down so that they can give who you are right back to you. And then they'll get from someone else. It's like, what? This is how they like for people to look by the time they're given to them. This is the situations that they know they like to see people in. You're not doing that. You got out of there. You didn't even turn around and look at this person. You just moved forward with your life. As the magician in your own world and in your reality. This person feels very much destroyed over this. They feel like now they're learning their fate in this. Because all they wanted to do was cause problems for you out of this self-importance that they have. You know, they want to be so important. They want to put you in a situation where you're the minority. You know, it's all of their people and then it's just you. Like what? People, I'm telling you, man, don't get caught up in this. <laughs> it's cool to be a loner because codependency is very ugly. This person feels like they built up some dark night for you and now they're sitting in it. All because of their envy, all because of their self-importance. They feel like, you know, really what they were doing when they were holding back from you, they were really trying to make sure you didn't have a happy family. They were trying to make sure you didn't have a happy home life. You weren't fortunate. You weren't, you know, living in bliss and happiness and all of this. But it's just like they held back from you and they were selfish and stingy because they wanted to see, you know, they didn't want to add to your happiness. They didn't want to add to your family stability. No. They just want you to add to theirs. This is someone that feels like, you know, regardless of how they tried to do this, now they're very, very much defeated. Um, this is like the last with this. This person is not going to be able to continue this on like this now because they've been exposed for their intentions. They've been exposed for how they move, how they like for people to be destitute and just really sick and ill. This is like, this is a very, very narcissistic person, man. They will speak something, some type of death or illness or a sickness or some type of um, incapacity or handicap over you knowing and then they'll go gather two or more and then they'll try to decree that into your life. This person can't believe that you picked up so much speed and haste and went and de decreed and declared in your own life and created in your own life away from this. They were trying to stop your happiness. They were trying to stop your home. They didn't want peace in your home life. But this person feels like that made them even more defeated. They have to transform that mindset too, because at the end of the day, it is undeniable that you are going to have blessings upon blessings. Your family will be in joy. You will have a lot of you know, like family support. There's going to be lots of gatherings. You're going to just really enjoy your life in your home, in your family and feel really, really complete. You're going to feel like you have everything that you need to just really live your life. Well, this person knows it's because you're a visionary. They feel like it's because you have very high standards. You, you speak fresh ideas. Like you're a very logical thinker. This is someone that sees you as like a revolutionary. They feel like you're amazing when you speak in large groups or to teams or even to friends, like the advice, the guidance that you give, this person feels like you didn't stay in this energy even for a second because of this, because of this intellectual way that you have about you.
this person feels as though any kind of, you know, because of who you are to your core, you could be put in the most dangerous situation and you're going to pop back. You just sprout right back up. Like there's no holding you down. You are divinely called, guided, and you're gifted. And it's just like you hold the destiny of your family and the happiness of your family in your own hands. What you say goes in your life. What you decree and declare over your life matters. What you say over your home, your wealth, your finances, your destiny, that's between you and God. This person is learning their fate in this, that they created a very dark night of the soul for themselves because you're not going to go backwards and deal with this person at all. They are so exposed for who they are. This is a fake friend. This is a fake family member. This is a fake um, ex-partner, whoever. This person feels like because you're this revolutionary, you have figured out a way to create a like quick change, either in like, like either in a group, either within yourself and your life and your community in some type of social setting. You, you have been able to use your intellectual speech, your high standards, being logical, innovative, truth, honest, all of that to really create a, and build a beautiful foundation for yourself. This is like you are going to be experiencing a level of joy and celebration. Whatever you have built, the work that you've done is a completed work. And it's like you did enough for two people. You did the work of two people. This person feels like you're um, you're going to speak that second person into existence, into your life. They also feel like that's going to happen fast. If this was a false twin flame, if this was like a false partner, you get what I'm saying? Like if this was a lesson for you, uh, um, you know, a stage for your growth and development, they know that it's going to happen quickly because they've already shown you their hand. They've shown you that they have no heart and no love at all. They have love for themselves. This person wants to build themselves up. They feel like you're going to speak some type of truth and it's really going to draw in a victory for you. You're going to be happy. You're going to have a happy home. You're going to either have a partner that you're able to work with successfully. You might do something. Um, you might build a home together or you're either going to be getting married. But whatever false twin flame, they know that your real twin flame is coming. Because when they left you out in the cold like this and you experienced this dark night, this really helped you to take off and really see the truth. <laughs> This person now feels like, okay, if they had have even stayed in this connection, there was really nothing wrong with it. They wanted to create ups and downs. They wanted to create a mismatch and misharmony. They didn't want to do this. They saw what they could create with you. And this selfish a-hole wanted to take your portion and go show it off to everybody else and make it look like this is what they do on their own. And that's not the case. This person is nothing without you. Zero. Zero. Okay. And you're so sweet. It's like you allowed this person to think that they were bigger. You allowed them to think that they were greater. You actually pumped their head up to the point where it didn't even come back and work for you and your benefit. Because when the time came for this person to use everything that they learned from you, all of the intellect, all of the skills, all of the love, the kindness, the support, all of this that you gave to this person, when it came time for reciprocating that, this is what you got. You got a hateful energy back towards you. It's like, that's all God really needed to see at that point. This is like the moment right before the old haggard, you know, the old beggarly haggard turns into the enchantress. It's like the moment once God get what he needs. Okay, there it is. Now I see you transform right into who you really are. And then stay there. Not even looking at this person. You don't want nothing to do with them. 
you've established something that has long-term success. This is like, not only have you, you have the capacity to create wealth and to sustain wealth, but you didn't even trip out over being put in a temporary situation like this because you're very confident in your ability to create wealth, to earn wealth, which is why this person needed you to be bowing down to them because it's not them that sits like this. This is you, boo. Male or female. If this is a, even more so, I'm feeling female. This is you. You did all of this by yourself. You built all of this on your own. You did enough work for two people. If this was a twin flame that you thought, this was a false twin flame. They know that now that they've been exposed, the real one is headed there. If this was a fake friend, this was supposed to be your best friend. This was supposed to be your ride or die and all of that. This fake individual right here, they know you have way better coming. You don't want this. You don't want them trying to put you in some destitute energy so that they can feel better about themselves and then bring a witness so you can't even defend yourself. They're going to make you look like a crazy person. Like you're not like, no, uh-uh, no. It would be good for you to never remember this person's name ever again. They're not worth it. They're not worth it. Because as long as they feel like they need to sit around and figure it out, they're only focused on self. This person should have saw what they did to you and gathered their self together and ran towards you to fix it. They didn't. And that's why I can't stress enough. Don't let them play you. They don't care. They do not care. They don't care if you live or if you die. They did not care. Because at least if you're on your deathbed, then they can come around and say that they brought you a freaking COVID test and, and a plate of freaking nasty food or something. Oh, yeah. You know, and then they can go brag about that. Like this person needs to be really turned inside out. And that's what's happening to them. This situation is going to transform this person. I pray that every person that this, this individual deals with would really, really take heed and notice how they, they take energy from one person and they need another one so that they can go and filter and give it to them. And then they pull energy from the other person and give it, and then they play these mind games. I pray that this is 100% exposed in this person's life where they can't even escape from everyone seeing their true manipulative character for what it really is, their lack of conscience and their lack of, of, of um, confidence. Hmm. Yeah. They feel like, you know, you're going to just stand in your truth. You're not going to turn even turn around and consider them. This person now feels like you're the one. They are devastated. This person feels like they're destroyed now. But they were recently just in this energy right here where they were still clashing with you. Like, this is like not touching you or affecting you. So this could even be this person doing this behind your back. You're not even present to fight back or to say anything back. It's just like this person got a mental health problem. For real. They know that you sit in this King of Pentacles energy where you are very accomplished and you're established. You have created a certain level of financial independence for yourself and you could do this again if you wanted to. This is like tearing them up that you really couldn't help manifest this in their life and you're not going to. You know why? Because you're, you're going to run from this. <laughs> Listen, run to Jesus. Get away from this devil. This is a cloaked devil. But look, here it is. This is justice for you to be established like this, for you to have these gifts and talents and these abilities for their treachery to not be able to hold you back or keep you down. The justice was your wealth. The justice is, is, is your wealth. It is your stability. It is what you've earned. It is what you still have within yourself. Your justice is you walking away from this, being intact. And now this person, here they go again. They got just one left now because they can't juggle you. So they still have somebody they want to put in a, in a juggling situation to give importance to their self. But most importantly, this person is realizing that now that all this justice has hit, you are the mature one in this energy and they are immature and childish. This person has a lack mindset. This is someone that is really like, uh, this is a kid. 
They have an immature mind. Like, seriously. What? How much time? Oh. Well, I'll just finish this one out. Yeah, but it's like this person is realizing that you got to level up. Like, this is them still following you around. They follow you around thinking about themselves. They, you know, they're thinking about how they were able to juggle you. Now they're worried that they were still fighting and stuff with you. Now it's like this childish mind and this elementary mind is looking at what you have. They're still looking. Or this is them trying to figure out, I don't know, man. But regardless, it's like they know that you have a new opportunity and you're setting your goals. There's things in place. Oh, this is why I say they've been following you around looking at you. Okay, so when your eyes are closed, you see how this King of Pentacles, his eyes are closed. The justice is they're taking a very good, this right here, they're taking a very good look at this. And this makes them feel very small, just like how they are. This person has a, um, this may not be for, for everybody, but what I'm picking up is someone with a Peter, with that Peter Pan syndrome or no, it's, um, a demon. Peter Pan is actually a demonic spirit. Disney made something nice out of it and made it fun or whatever, but literally Peter Pan is nothing more than a gaslighter. Like he's a demon spirit that never grows up. The pan is just, you know, an abbreviation for panic. He likes to cause panic amongst other people. This is why he likes to have a lot of people around him. He just constantly gaslights. He gaslight Wendy. He told her that her family was so this and that, and they wanted to go be children forever, and you never have to grow up, and you can, like, they sell all these dreams, and you have all of this or whatever, and when you get there, it's just hell on earth. You should look it up. I watched this guy who was breaking it down and he was really dope. I don't remember who he was, but you should look it up. Like he really broke it down. Like, no, Peter Pan is the only one that never grows old. He kills the lost boys before they ever reach maturity or the pirates do. But the pirates are the ones that actually broke free and escaped from Peter because they got tricked too. They grew up and became pirates. That's how they got there. And then they fight the lost boys because they hate Peter. But Peter keeps going and recruiting and bringing more because he needs to continually have someone to really pull into this crazy game. And then just laughing about it. It's just a demonic spirit. <laughs> like he's going to go and grab someone and make her his mom. Like, how are you going to get someone in, You like, and that really could be significant here too. There could be someone that really needs a mother. They want you to be their mom or something like that. I don't know. I'm going to leave it there. This one was just different. Okay. I'll see you at the next one. Like, share, subscribe. Love you. Bye.